We know that the Bible is unlike any other book written. It's living and it's active, but it can be kind of intimidating to get into. So how do you read the Bible and how do you make it a part of your day-to-day -day routine? Hey guys, my name is Calm Thomas. I'm so glad that you're here. Today we're looking at the Bible. We're looking at how to read it, how to understand it, and where do you begin to make it a part of your day-to-day -day routine. My grandfather used to say that if you have a clean Bible, it probably means you have a dirty heart. But if you have a dirty Bible, you probably have a clean heart. He's not talking about soil, he's talking about well-worn, well-used. Now this is what his Bible looks like. Yeah, crazy, right? Now, my Bible is not quite there yet. I remember as a kid, I would hear my dad, my grandfather say that and I'd lick my fingers and rub the edges to kind of make it dirty as though that's what he was talking about. But when we get into the Bible, when we get into the Word of God, it changes us from the inside out. It is a document unlike anything other than you'll ever read in your life. So it's really, really important that we make it a part of our day-to-day -day routine. And I recommend we start our day by reading the Bible. So that gets me into the first of my five tips for you today. The first one is create a regular routine and rhythm to your day. What I mean is that you create a rhythm for the way that you engage with the Word of God. You, you do it the same way every time so it becomes more familiar and it's easier to create a habit around that. Some people read the Bible at night before they go to bed. Some people read it during their lunch break at work. And some people, like me, we read it in the morning. Now, whatever you decide to do, decide to do it and make it a regular thing. I recommend setting the same time every single day and the same location if possible. That way you create a rhythm for your Bible reading. Okay, tip number two. Why not stay in a particular book for a little while rather than rushing through it? It's not a race, it's not a competition. And the Bible's a really big book, so there's a lot in here. If you're unfamiliar with the Bible, this Bible is filled with 66 individual books written over two testaments. Now each one of these books is part of a grand narrative all pointing to Jesus and revealing him as the King of Kings. No matter what page you turn onto, it'll have something that will lead you to Jesus. Sometimes it's kind of tricky to see, but it's there, trust me. It's got what we call the crimson thread. You see, we're not reading it to know more about history than somebody else or to brag that we can quote a verse. Reading the Bible is about meeting with and talking with and hearing from Jesus, to be transformed by these words. These words are not just ink on paper. These words are living and they do change us from the inside out. It's absolutely amazing. So whether you've never actually opened up a Bible before or you've read the Bible back to front, I believe that these tips and tricks that I have for you today will help you to engage with this on a personal level, but also make it a part of your life. What I want to do is look at a particular passage that will help us get a bit of an idea of how the scriptures fit into the narrative of things. I'm reading from a, a, a passage from the book of Luke. You can find that there's a contents right at the beginning. Luke chapter 24. And in this passage, Jesus has died, he has resurrected from the dead, and he has met with two of, two of his disciples. And as he's walking along this road with them, they haven't quite recognized him yet. They haven't re realized who he is. But this is what it says in chapter 24, 24, verse 27. It says, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, talking about the Old Testament, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. What Jesus is saying is all of this stuff, all the Old Testament, all the history, all the prophets, everything that was written in the Old Testament is all about me. And what happens is that when we hear Jesus speak to us about himself through the word, something happens and it happened to the disciples here. They reflected, these two disciples later on reflected, they asked each other in verse 32, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? I love that because when we open the Bible, our hearts burn within us because God is speaking to us in a really personal and powerful way. So when it comes to the Bible, it's really not so complicated. We, we make it really scary and we, we put it over there on the shelf and it gathers dust, but it, the more that we have it open, the more opportunity God has to speak into your heart and into mine. 
One other way that we can get to know the Bible better is to read the Bible alongside a, what we call a devotional. This devotional is a classic. It's, called, it's kind of worn out now. Uh, it's called My Atmosphere for His Highest, and it's written by Oswald Chambers. Now, Oswald Chambers has gone to be with the Lord, but these are snippets from his sermons back when he was preaching turned into little daily devotionals. Each one is only short, it's about that long, and it's powerful and it takes a verse and it unpacks it. And it, and it often, amazingly often, ties into what you happen to be reading in the Bible that day. So how do you read the Bible? Well, if you've never read the Bible before, that's okay. This is awesome that you're watching this. I recommend starting in a book called John. John tells the great story of Jesus's life and ministry, his death and victory over the cross and over sin, and, and, and it gives a great picture of who Jesus is. That is a fantastic place to begin. All you have to do is get a Bible or download the Bible app on your phone, Click to the contents, find the book of John, not 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, They're later, they come later, but John. Start there, it talks all about Jesus, it's a great place to begin. If you've been reading the Bible and you find it difficult to kind of make a routine, what I recommend is to start by, start small. Don't, don't try to read a whole book a day, that can be quite, quite intense. You might get one or two, three days in and then get like a New Year's resolution. You lose pace, start small. If I'm honest, I'm not a great reader. I, I can't read a lot at a time. In fact, realistically, I read from one to two chapters a day maximum. A chapter a day is a fantastic way to start. If a chapter is too much for you right away, why don't you start with just one verse? You can take it slow, you can sit on it, it can just be a, a beginning that's like creating momentum. Start with one verse every day, but make sure you do it every day because it creates a rhythm for your day, it creates a rhythm for your lifestyle, and, and as you get one verse down, why not add two? Why not add three? And before you know, you're going to be reading a chapter a day and you're going to be encountering God every single moment. Once you're reading regularly and you've got this rhythm down, my advice is to kind of stick with the book for a while. A lot of people that I talk to like to read a book three times, four times, five times in a row on repeat before moving on to the next one. The, way, the reason why they do that is because it gives them a great insight helps them to remember what happens. Rather than just reading over it run, once and skipping onto the next thing and forgetting what they read, they go over it and go over it and go over it and that helps them to remember what they read. If you're reading the Bible for the first time, I recommend at least reading through it once. I wouldn't necessarily start in Genesis, though some people love to start in Genesis and go all the way from cover to cover. That's awesome. If you're that person, then good on you. But for the rest of us, kind of starting with it, with one of the Gospels, what we call the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John, the one I mentioned before. And then look at the epistles, which are the letters that come after those four books. That's a fan, pl fantastic place to begin. So picture this. You've just gotten up, you've just gotten ready, you walk downstairs, you make yourself a coffee. That's what I do. I love coffee with my, my Bible in the morning. You grab your coffee, you've read your Bible chapter for the day, you've read your devotion for the day. What happens then? What do you do next? Well, I would ask two questions. The first question is, how does this passage point to Jesus? That question is fantastic because it helps us to think about what we've read, understand its context in the whole Bible, and how it points to the author of the Bible. The second question is, what is this saying to me today? You see, the Bible, like I said at the beginning of this video, this Bible is a living document. It is alive, and so it's, that means it speaks to us. It speaks to us every day. And so even though this was written 2,000 plus years ago, it is speaking to you because God is speaking to you. So what is God saying to you in this passage? What's the takeaway for you today? It's not saying, it's not falsely appropriating something and forcing it to fit your situation. Be like, oh, that's why my boss doesn't like me. It's not forcing it to say something it's not actually saying. But if you ask the first question first, how is this pointing to Jesus? And then the second question, what is this saying to me today? That's a fantastic way to grow in knowing how to, what we call exegete, understand the Bible, open up the Bible and let it teach us. After you've answered those two questions, you can write it down in a journal or on your phone or just contemplate and think about it. The next thing I recommend to do is take a moment and pray. Prayer is fantastic to start your Bible reading with and to close with, but at least at the end, ask God to help you with 
what you read that day. Ask God to be with you throughout your day when you're at school or work or whatever you happen to be doing that day. Ask God for his strength, for his peace, and that Jesus would continue to speak to you throughout the day. That you would not forget what you read, but that, you, that God would change you from the inside out through what you read that day. Now, as you read through the Bible, I guarantee you're going to have questions about some stuff. There are some things in here that are quite challenging and quite difficult to understand. I promise you, it's okay. What I recommend is taking those questions. Don't forget it. Don't pretend like you don't have questions. Questions are fantastic because questions, they lead to answers. So take those questions and ask somebody that might know the Bible a little bit better that you trust. It could be a youth pastor, or it could be somebody at your church, or it could be a family member or a friend. If you would like to, please reach out to me. Leave a comment below, and if you have any questions, I'd love to help you answer those questions or point you in the right direction to get some answers. But uh, questions are a great way to learn more. So don't be afraid of difficult things, but push into those, because it's likely that God might be challenging you on something written in there. And there you have it, a crash course in understanding and reading the Bible. Now, we didn't cover everything. Believe me, we couldn't have covered everything in a, in a thousand years. But this is a great way to get the door open, to get into the Word and to make it a part of your life. Enjoy it. It's not a chore. It's the, it's the delight of your heart as you get to know God more. And, uh, and what looks like old dusty books actually becomes your best friend. And, uh, and before you know it, your Bible may get dirty, but your heart will be changed from the inside out as Jesus continues to speak to you and you get to know him better. I hope this video was helpful. If it meant anything to you, why don't you join our channel? There's tons more videos like this, but please, like I said, reach out to somebody. I will be praying for you. And if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to get back to everybody with your questions and point you in the right direction. God bless you guys.